Seek recognition. I claim the time in opposition to the amendment and ask to yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentlewoman has five minutes. I rise in opposition to this amendment. Trans service members have served and served successfully for years. In fact, trans people are even more likely to serve in the U.S. military than cisgender people. So it's mind-boggling that we would want to deter and discriminate against a group of people who have proven their patriotism and deep commitment to our country. All of us are well aware that we're facing steep military recruitment and retention challenges. This amendment will worsen this crisis by pushing transgender service members out of the military. And that's because gender-affirming care is necessary and medically backed. Care that gives you the ability to be your true, authentic self is primary care. And it's not something that should be easily dismissed. If our service members constantly worry about their right to exist, their ability to serve our country is jeopardized, and it harms our readiness and ability to respond quickly and effectively to national security challenges. I'm not alone in this. Secretary Austin agrees that allowing people to serve as their authentic selves is the right and the smart thing to do for our military operations. That's why I urge my colleagues to do the right thing for our values and our readiness and oppose this harmful amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. For what purpose is the... Oh, the gentleman from Montana is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Let me, let me reiterate these numbers again. If these, these individuals are eight times more likely to attempt suicide, eight times more likely to attempt suicide and nine times more likely to have negative mental health episodes than other service members. The United States military veterans are experiencing 21 suicides a day, and we are doing everything in the Veterans Affairs Committee to reduce that number. Why in the world are we considering bringing individuals in that are going to increase that number? If these individuals are that troubled on an ordinary day without the pressures of war, why would we risk our nation's security on them in wartime? It just simply does not make sense. Allowing this radical trans agenda to infiltrate our military will put our service members and my constituents in harm's way and will make our country more vulnerable than it's ever been in modern history. My common sense amendment would save the taxpayers millions of dollars and help protect our service members as well as our country and maybe save a lot of lives as well. I reserve, Madam Speaker. The gentleman reserves for what purpose? The gentlewoman is recognized. I yield one minute to the distinguished ranking member of the Armed Services Committee. The gentleman Thank you. is recognized. Uh, Madam Chair, the, the ignorance complained, complained, contained in these comments is, is really breathtaking. Transgender people who have normal, regular health care are no more likely to commit suicide than anybody else. So basically, the statistics he's showing, once somebody identifies as having a problem, they're more likely to have a problem. I mean, that would be like saying we've identified that, you know, service members who complain of PTSD symptoms are more likely to commit suicide. The point is to get proper care for transgender people, and you don't have these issues. It is the ignorance that has prevented them from getting that proper care. And by the way, the overwhelming majority of transgender people don't need any of this, okay? Any more than any of us do. But when they need it, they need it, just like when anybody else does. And to Ms. Jacobs' point, we need to recruit people. Being bigoted against transgender people takes a huge population out of the recruitment. This is a very simple, easy thing to do and deal with. And again, I really want to emphasize, not every transgender person needs this care, all right? If you have a problem, yes, you are more likely to have a problem, but that is true of anybody, regardless of your gender. We need transgender the people to serve time in the military. Is expired. This amendment will make that more difficult and should be defeated. The gentleman's time has expired. Uh, for the gentleman from Madam Montana. Madam Speaker, could I request Second. how much time I have remaining? One and a quarter minutes. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, what this is is just shows to the extent that the Biden administration has been pushing this agenda into our military, and it is weakening our military. It is not making it stronger. We have drag shows taking place at Malmstrom Air Force Base. There are 150 ICBM missiles that are being controlled by that Air Force Base and by these individuals. I don't want someone who doesn't know if they are a man or a woman with their hand on a missile button. We have explicit library books on display 
for children at Maelstrom Air Force Base. The U.S. Navy's digital ambassador program featuring drag queen posting on TikTok. The Department of Defense is paying for travel expenses and is offering up to 21 days of leave for soldiers and their dependents to get abortions. Again, let me tell you that anything that is not focused on making the United States military the most effective fighting force on earth is nothing more than a distraction and we should not be paying for it. I won't ask the people of Montana to pay for it and I will not ask the people across the United States to pay for it. I reserve. Your time has expired. The gentleman reserves. Uh, the gentlewoman from California. Can I inquire how much time we have left? Uh, two and three quarters minutes. Thank you. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Uh, I thank Ranking Member Smith for his comments, and I would like to emphasize that transgender people are people. They are much more than statistics. They are people serving our country. They are people who care and are patriotic. They are more likely to harm themselves and suffer from mental health challenges due to the harmful rhetoric they hear from elected officials denying their right to exist. My youngest sibling, my brother, is trans, and he is one of the most responsible people I know. I would be thrilled if he wanted to serve our country, and you should be too.